Courtney Moses, and this is... I'm Paul Dingle. My husband. <laughs> um, this is Good Times Organic Farm, and we started the farm in 2012, and then in 2014 we became certified organic, and Paul came on then, and we've just been growing and expanding ever since. Here on the property, it's about two acres, but we actually have about, I mean, what? third to a half acre in production um, at this place and then at our other property we've got about another half acre in production over there maybe a little less um, but we do bigger crops like potatoes and things that you can't do on a small scale here because we can kind of sprawl out over there so like winter squash mm -hmm. and potatoes and that kind of thing yeah here we mainly focus on um, season extensions so we have three high tunnels, um, so which gives us the ability to grow year round, but in like the summer times we focus on tomatoes and heirloom tomato stuff that can be protected and be all, grow a lot better under cover <laughs> yeah. and outside. And then in the winter time we, some, of our, some of our bigger crops are root crops like turnips, carrots are a really big one for us, and uh, also salad mix, so we do a, a cut and come again lettuce. All right, so inside, inside here, this is a, called a high tunnel. And the beauty of these things is they're like, a, they're like a greenhouse, but we don't heat them. And so, the, you know, we get the greenhouse effect of the sun. And then so we can get things in here earlier in the year so we can extend our season so we can get a jump on growing, say, tomatoes. We can get about a month to six weeks earlier on tomatoes. So that way we can get a more money because you know there's less market uh, I mean there's less tomatoes on the market and then another thing is it gets at the tail end of the season so now you can see that we've got all these crops and it's well past the time when you know you'd be having let's say celery outside or growing and um, another amazing thing about this is it keeps the rain off the crops and rain and humidity and moisture and water is a big issue for fungal diseases and so you know you'll see tomatoes that are all shriveled up and nasty looking and that's usually because they got a fungal disease and so we don't really have to worry about that as much you we can still get them still have issues and your own different kinds of issues in these tunnels but it really helps with keeping your plants dry and um, and healthier throughout the season so in this row, it's been harvested all the way up down to the very end. We've got some ginger. Then right here, we're looking at Hakurai turnips. These are a Japanese market turnip. And then here we've got two different types of beets. We've got a red beet and a golden beet. In this bed, we did an interplanting of carrots and sugar snap peas. And again, we interplanted uh, beets. We did well multiple types of beets, more of the golden beets and more red beets. And then here we've got a few different types of radishes. We've got a purple radish. We've got, and then we've got daikon radishes. And then in this last row, we've got more ginger going all the way to the end. We use drip irrigation for the most part in our tunnels. Um, and what that means is, so we, if you want to come over here, Turn this off. And this is hooked up to a well. And we wash on municipal water, so the county and city water. That way we don't have to water with that water because that would cost money. And with this, you hook this up and then tighten that. And this right here is called a disc filter. And so the filter right through here, you can see all the little sediment and all the little particles that built up in there. So what I'll do is wash that off. Because once that gets too gunked up and too much nasty little stuff in there, it'll, it'll clog up and the water won't come out. And the reason it's really important to have the, this filter 
is once we once the water passes through it it goes through these lines back on and then it'll come out of these it comes into this line and then it'll come out these so this turns it on and off and then you can see little droplets of water that start coming out of here so without that filter these will get clogged up and then so that comes out about every six inches and then that gets enough to where we can get the bed really wet and water all in one place that way we're not watering in the rows and if you water in other places in your tunnel then you're going to get weeds that come up and so we don't want to water weeds we want to water our plants it's really important to have water irrigation in here because it doesn't rain inside of a high tunnel and so you got to get water to your plants so they can grow big and strong so these are our meat birds um we built these movable coops for them so we could keep them on pasture so we got we got a hundred, a few of them died as expected, but so we'll probably process around like 80 of them and uh, take them to market and sell them. These are uh, kosher kings mixed with a bard rock. <laughs> yeah. um, so this is our pack shed. Uh, we built this so we could process, wash, clean all of our vegetables. Um, so we usually bring them in here, spray them off, wash them, package them, and then we put them in these walk-in coolers that we, um, we actually source like these panels from um, insulated panel place. And we put them together in two layers so that makes it, it says like an R30 rating so we're cool enough in here. Um, so we seal, seal everything off. And this is our air conditioning unit, and it's overridden by this cool bot, so we can bring it down to any temperature that we need. And yeah, so we're storing our garlic in here, our potatoes, we got our onions and shallots, we got our ferments. 